here we are today talking about breakups. The last two days was my first time that I like didn't cry all day. First, you're like grieving this person. Yes, that's then, what I feel. Yeah. Someone messaged me the other day. She was the only person that messaged me and I loved it. She said, congratulations. That's what I always say. I think breakups are exciting. Oh my God, do they see me? Yes. I'll overshare a little bit. <laughs> okay, this segment's gonna be a little different. We're all a little drunk, okay? <laughs> oh. We are in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to another episode of Hot Mess with Alex Earl. We are on yet another trip and we're in Texas. I've never been to Austin before and I hear that Austin is a lot of fun and we are here for South by Southwest weekend. We just got back from the airport and we're in a little bit of a rush because we need to get ready to go out now. And another big event going on this weekend is Unwell, which is obviously the network that I do this podcast through, has a house. And I was confused at first. I was like, is it actually a house or is it like a pop-up? It's actually a house. We just drove by it on the way back from the airport. There is already girls lined up outside around the corner. They're all drinking. I was looking through my tag stories. Everyone's been pre-gaming in line for hours. And tonight they have Big Al's Bar. So there's a big party outside and the house is basically set up like the whole backyard has like two bars there's a carbone station for pasta there's a stage they're gonna have a live performance like the, it's like a big playground back there and i'm really excited to get there it's gonna be a quick one because we're only here for two days and then i'm going to la but somehow we have so much stuff packed into these two days that we will not be sleeping much and it's a very work hard play hard weekend because Yes, the stuff we're doing like tonight, for example, is like going out and fun. But then I'm also, you know, getting up. Ooh, I forgot about this. We're going to have some guests on this weekend. I'm speaking on this panel tomorrow, which I don't even really know what I'm speaking about. <laughs> and I have to also figure that out. But we're also in Austin and we want to have fun. So welcome back. Here we go again. <laughs> We are in Texas. Yeehaw. Wait, speaking of that, I was really confused on the vibes here because the invitations that Unwell was sending out, it made it seem like very like Western and cowboy. So I was like, oh my God, I got a hat. I got my cowboy boots. I was like, oh, I'm ready to go. And then when I was packing, which was this morning, because I'm never gonna learn i'm never gonna learn to pack ahead of time like i i don't know why i always think that i can do it and i can't do it i cannot do it and this trip is like a two week long trip because after this we're going right to la which we have we'll get into next but i just don't know why i thought that i could go out the night before wake up at 9 a.m i was a little bit hungover and deciding to pack for a two-week trip and it was just a complete disaster i had to text braxton of course he came to save the day but i was like please help me pack because i have actually no idea what to put in the suitcase right now and like i just had no time before we had to leave for the airport it's so wild because last week we were all the way in paris and now we're in texas and then after this we're going to la and i'm like what is my life like how is this the reality of my life and you know, I always said that I wanted a job that allowed me to travel around a lot. Like when I was growing up, that was like on my bucket list. I was like, I just want a job that allows me to travel and we are doing it. <laughs> so this weekend is going to be a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. And I feel like some people, I don't know, they think that I'm just like always going out all the time and I'm, I'm doing both over here. We're doing both and I'm actually pretty good at getting both done and honestly I'm just so grateful that I get to bring you guys along with me on these trips so we are in for a big weekend in Austin don't forget to like follow subscribe to the show wherever you're watching it I love you guys and I need to get in the bathroom and do my makeup and get ready to go out tonight we're running a little late we're like two hours late goodbye this ain't Texas but I'll hold them we're ready for Austin night one. Getting ready didn't really go as planned because I knew this was gonna happen because I packed this morning. 
and I forgot the top that I was supposed to wear with this and then I was like oh I should wear a bra with this and I was like really ready to wear the bra and then I was like wait that doesn't seem like a good idea either so we're going with a t-shirt the suitcases are everywhere this is the ironing board Braxton ironed my skirt for me he's the best we're running a little late so we have to go um and we're going to Big Al's bar so we're in for a fun night and then afterwards Braxton and I are thinking that we just want to go out in Austin and kind of just frolic and maybe find some bars and dance and meet some people and have a good night. I hear Austin's really really fun so I think this should be easy. I don't think that should be a struggle. The Unwell house looks insane. We were driving back from the airport. There was a huge line outside and I like rolled down the window in my uber and i like stuck my head out and everyone was saying hi and everyone was like in the line pre-gaming like these girls have been drinking for hours so i need to play a little bit of catch up right now i shoved my face with some chicken wings when we got back here some spicy wings and yeah we have to go it sounds like a party out here like i hear music there's people like screaming and singing outside this seems like my type of town <laughs> i'm also gonna be really embarrassed if it's not that western here because i didn't bring my cowboy hat because i was like i don't think that's the vibe but i have my cowgirl boots on and like i just don't know like are we being like the true guitarists like probably but whatever braxton yes ma'am come on oh there he is <laughs> i told you we're ready he's ready and braxton copied my outfit tonight who do you think laid it out first i'm scared why am i nervous i don't know <laughs> Just you got that nervous energy, that's what it is, you ready? <coughs> Feel good? You ready to rock? Stop. Now that I'm watching this outfit video back, I'm kind of thinking I should wear the bra. Ooh. I just was worried about like my stomach, like if I want to like sit and slouch, like I just don't want to be worried about it. But now I'm kind of like, wait, that might have looked a little better. Should I do the bra? We had the same conversation 25 minutes ago. This is the bra on. Is it too much? See, all of a sudden you put it on, you second guess yourself. I'm already feeling self conscious. I think we should change back. <laughs> I'll just put the shirt back on. Guys, I don't know. Sorry. T shirt, I'm loving it. T shirt time, let's go. Got a little number in my pickup truck. <laughs> Daddy's right there, Do they play country music here? Come on now. It's still Texas. Okay. Of course. I'm ready. Do we have the car? Yeah. Okay. Mama got the car. <laughs> I think you gotta say something. <laughs> Just a little pre-game to the bar, some coffee. Why am I so nervous? I think it's anxious, excited. Probably excited, exactly. There was a lot of people out, out there when we passed the first time. And that was, what, two hours ago? Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. For the honk and tonk and the donk and donk. I'm excited to see the Earl girls and dance with them. But every time we go out with them, it's always like ends up in a really, really dark hole. Because <laughs> Maybe every, that's why you're nervous. Everyone is so fun. And they're just too fun. Like when I was with them in Chicago, that was, I had a flight the next morning after we, there was an unwell event in Chicago. I actually don't think I've ever been that down bad in my life. So we're going to go through a back entrance. We got that back entrance. Who <laughs> got? <laughs> right? It's so corny. <laughs> Is that the line? Yeah. The line. Had no, right here. And then uh, there should be a back alley here, right? Yeah, so you should be able to take a ride up here. This oh, oh my god, do they see me? Yeah, because of the light. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no? Keep going. Keep, uh -oh. keep going. Oh, I'm sorry! Okay. <laughs> so I don't know how Alex is. is drinking this like it's water. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know either because it's good. good. 
Is it though? The same today. We're gonna go say hi to all of the unwell crew outside because I understand there's capacity, but we don't give a fuck about capacity. So we're coming to you, okay? Here we go. Yes, sir. We're gonna go with in the streets. Okay. Uh, sure oh, okay. I think I think you just I think you just had an accent. Right, Going outside to say hi to everyone that couldn't get in because of capacity because so many people showed up. So we're gonna go outside and say hi. Let's go, Texas. Into the streets we go. I mean, I've been here for like two hours. Okay. But I love it. Have a great time. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. I took a picture. Yes, girl. Oh my god, Alex, we love you. We love, 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 love. Let's rage. Oh, I feel a little cup. It's good. Basket goes in water. Hot water. Four minutes. Four, Four minutes. minutes. Open sauce. Chillers. Mmm. Yeah. Mussels. Okay. Pour jar in pan. Whole, whole jar? Uh, no, not for that much. Do like uh, three quarters. Right. Chef says that's good. Yes, Chef. Okay, we got a rooster of heavy cream here. Oh it kind of comes out the mouth of the rooster here when you pour it. Okay. Here we go. We're going to bring this up to Sarah. Cook him with Al. The show no one knew they needed. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Hey. Hey. It looks so good. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, we're just waiting for this to simmer right now, oh, it's and made we have the pasta thing. boiling in here. You made this? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. From scratch. Okay. So, yeah, we're just waiting for the, the pasta to boil. I'm just like finish mine. out the party's over that was a lot I'm honestly unaware how I'm still like standing and functioning like I I think I'm okay maybe I don't look okay and I'm gonna watch this back and be like oh me but that was insane and everyone was just everyone brought the vibes and 
this space honestly also brought the vibe. So you come in through here. I'm gonna walk you through. We have a little bar over here and then there's a stage. So there was a live band, they were performing. There's a little like photo section over here. And I came in here and I was like, I was just shocked. I'm also, <laughs> I'm a little drunk right now. So I don't know how great this is gonna sound. Um, oh wait, let's go through here. But in here we have another bar. Like this is the coolest space ever. And they told me they like have this event space rented out for fun things and I was like I'm coming back here for my wedding I love it here um, and then this okay somehow I did not expect this but I spent my whole night making pasta um, that was not planned but back here we had the carbone tent honestly was such a great turnout like this was just the best night ever and I'm loving Austin but I've only seen Austin in these quarters so far so the Earl Girls recommended a ton of spots for me to go out tonight. Holy hell, this was a long night and I need to pee right now. But we had a lot of fun and I took a lot of shots with you guys. And we have a panel in the morning that we're speaking on. So work hard, play hard. We're gonna get both. We're gonna do both. Off to the clubs. Guys going out last night was a bad idea. Starting with Big Owls. We were there, we had so much fun. I loved meeting all the Earl girls. One brought me a hat that said Austin that was so cute and I was wearing around the whole night. And then somehow I was on pasta duty. I went to the Carbone station and started making pastas. I thought it would be like a 10, 15 minute thing, like I make a bowl of pasta and leave, but I like really was enjoying it, I guess. And I made like batches of pasta for like hours. And then I also at the same time, because you guys are crazy, you guys were like begging me to feed you shots. So I start pouring tequila in these cups and then we ran out of cups. So I just started pouring it straight in everyone's mouth. And then the people, I don't know actually who was handing me bottles of tequila. And then I kept feeling like we had to finish the bottles of tequila. So this turned into like a two hour excursion of me making pasta for everybody and then also pouring shots in everyone's mouth and i probably looked like a mad woman and i don't even want to see that footage it was a lot of fun and then we decided to go out after it was also daylight savings i had no idea so we lost an hour of sleep austin's like really cool because i i don't know i feel like in miami we don't have this like there was just like a whole strip like a whole street of just like bars and i don't know it was just such a fun vibe um you guys were giving me so many recommendations on where to go so we went to this one place which was kind of like i don't know like a loungy type of feel clubby type of feel and we were there and i was starving so we ordered pizza to the club and then we were like oh could the bottle girls bring the pizza in with like lighters and everything so they brought it in uh, and we we're all just like munching on this pizza like sh cheese was like hanging from my mouth it was getting pretty gnarly in there the bottle girl was like oh my god she was like i like have like a really random like favor request and i was like yeah and she was like can you sign my tits like if i bring you a sharpie can you sign my tits and i was like yes so i'm like literally with this bottle girl and she was so sweet and i'm like holding her boobs i'm like you have great boobs and i'm signing it with the sharpie and then i was like you know what maybe it's time for me to go home look at this pizza being brought into the club we might need to overlay this if you guys can't see this but we were having fun with the pizza in there and everyone in the club was looking at us like what are these people doing but i sat down and i was hungry and now we're getting ready for the wwd panel so we're, we're switching into business mode over here and um, I have to pull it together. So have a few espresso shots in here. I actually really love speaking on panels or whenever I get to do public speaking. I've always liked public speaking, even though it scares me. And like right before, you guys will probably see, I like freak out and I'm like, I can't do this. I don't know anything. Um, but then I just remember I'm speaking about myself. I know, I know me and i just try to like calm down but once i get up there i'm always fine and i love being able to like take these speaking opportunities because i don't know i just feel like it's cool it's hopefully helpful and insightful for other people I get to 
share some stuff that like when I was starting out I wish I was able to hear so I do really really enjoy it and I'm grateful that I get to do these I love them we're going over the questions for the panel today just to make sure I know what I'm talking about usually before you do any type of like speaking engagement they'll send you whether it's just like broader topics or exact questions and even when they do send you the exact questions it never really it usually goes a little bit more conversationally so some things pivot and then there's questions off of those questions but they like to send it to you so you have like a pretty good idea of what you're talking about <laughs> We are ready to go. Business Big Al has been activated. I'm feeling better. Brain fog is going away, and if I mess up, just is what it is. Hot mess, that's fine. Let's go. Excited? Yep, I'm excited. Not nervous at all. We're in the Uber now. We're off to the WWD panel. I don't know where we're going, but I think this must be where I think there are a lot of other panels for South by Southwest. So maybe I'm lying, but I'm, I think so. So I think it'll be cool to see and maybe we'll stop and watch some others. And then afterwards we're getting ribs cause I'm hungry and a little nauseous, but that's okay. No one will know. We'll kick it into action up there. No one will know a thing. We'll just smile and wave. got here we made it we're in the green room right now so we have some snacks over here I've been having some water and then we're just really sitting here and waiting until it's my turn the nerves are starting to go away a little bit but I always get a little bit flustered before going on but it's exciting it looks like a good turnout out there um, there's people waiting outside and a nice little you'll see down there but there's like two couches that we're gonna be sitting on talking to each other so it should be good and I'm excited and now we just wait. I'm excited to be in Austin. Um, we just got in yesterday so we haven't even been here for a full day yet. I start getting sweaty. Yeah, because you're nervous. Clammy girl. Who is it? It's not that bad yet. Oh, it's not. You're good. We should feel my arm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good there. I, I'll take your word for it. We're ready. We're not nervous. We're ready? Yeah. Let me scream at him. We're ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Go kill it, baby. We are ready for this. Ready. The past year has been such a whirlwind. For years and years, I was posting on social media and I really enjoyed the TikTok platform. I was like, you know, I want to try and make something out of this. And, you know, not really anything came of it. I started struggling with acne really bad. There was one day I was so insecure about the skin on my face. And I was like, you know what? I was so down bad. I posted a photo from like months and months back where, you know, my skin looked perfect, airbrushed. And I posted it on Instagram. And as soon as I did that, I felt so guilty after because I was like, I'm just like almost like projecting, you know, because I was like, that's just not how I look right now or how I feel right now. And I realized it was just being fake. So I took it to social media and started sharing my acne journey and the second that I started just being like honest and candid with my audience is when I started to get an audience and a community. I'll overshare a little bit, <laughs> probably more than I should sometimes before like TMI, but I think that's the thing that's special about the relationship I have with my audience is I try not to set any type of boundaries and I try to just let them in on my life and get them to you know, feel like they really, really know me and share the good and the bad. Some ribs, baby back ribs. I, I feel good, like 
I, I think I got my points across that I wanted to get across and then it also like it got a little fun in there once I think we opened up the questions to the audience. It just like made me feel very comfortable. Everyone was really welcoming so it was a good environment and I ended up being able to like chill a little bit more. Baby Q in Austin with my sweaty pits because I'm nervous. <laughs> I was nervous. Now I'm happy. We should get a drink. Oh baby, we're getting real. We got a saddle. Saddle up, baby. Last night Braxton threw up a Zeta sign for these girls, and now Braxton's the face of Zeta. So <laughs> we got a lot of different universities yeah. tagging me. In it's okay. I was in Zeta though. Exactly. So it's fine. We're leaving barbecue now. We picked up Remy. Now we're going back to the hotel to go chill out before we go and honky tonk, I guess. We're honky tonking honky -tonk. tonight. <laughs> Staying in a museum? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I'm delusional, that's why I'm laughing. Oh, fuck. Okay, we'll, we'll move this stuff. Guys, welcome to... Um, I don't really know what type of podcast setup this is right now. We kind of made shift. Um, we just pulled some chairs over here. We got some blankets and we're going to sit down and have a little girl talk because Remy and I were out last night and I don't know, you know, when you're just like, you're having a few drinks, you're talking to a friend and like we were just talking and we were like, this would be so good for other girls to hear. Just like so helpful. And I feel like Remy and I have like a funny backstory meeting situation yes. that also leads into this. So we're just, we're sitting down today and we're having some girl talk. And actually the first time that Remy and I ever talked, ever, I actually talked about you on my panel today. What did you say about me? <laughs> I, so when I started to blow up on social media, I guess, which I hate saying that. Not it's like I so guess. Weird. I know I do the same thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Remy reached out to me and DM'd me and I was talking about, cause someone was like, oh, did you, find a team like how did you find a team to work with yeah. and I was like Remy Bader actually DM'd me and she was like hey girl like do you need some help or like what's going on because she was like I know you must be stressed out and I always say to this day like Remy is such a good person because I don't think a lot of people would do this she called me yeah. for like <laughs> three hours on the phone and she was explaining things to me and I was like wait I don't understand what an agent is and she was like no but it's different than a manager and I was like I'm so confused and stressed and I was sitting in the CVS parking lot Remy talked to me for like three hours I remember it was around like christmas time yes. i was like with my family I'm, like, I'm going upstairs to talk to this girl like yeah. i want to help her and the first thing you were like just get a lawyer first just get a lawyer and i did and remy connected me with all of the people that i work with now which i feel like a lot of people just are like selfish in some ways and wouldn't do that so like that to me has always stuck out about you thank so you. thank you for that no, i and think it's important especially when i see it was all starting to happen and i was like i had no one to go to at that time i, I knew nothing i didn't know no one does though it's like yeah. a world like there, there was no TikTok before this. So it's yeah. like when you specifically like come up on TikTok, it's like I just like knew what you were probably thinking. And at that point, it kind of was like starting to blow up for you. And I'm like, there, you're definitely having a million people reach out. And thank God, I remember like randomly when Megan Trainer used to comment on my videos, I was like, yeah. can I talk to you? I was <laughs> like, can I like we chat? And she's the one who told me, really? get a freaking attorney. Really? And that's why I told you that. And then... I did it a little backwards. A lot of people get like a manager first. I got agents first mm -hmm. by literally like reaching out on LinkedIn. But then I just learned so much from it that whenever I see people doing it wrong or like getting yeah. a bad team around them or something, it's like, I just like want to help. So thank you for that because I would probably not be where I am right now if you I was. You still would. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, like that was so amazing. And I always say Remy is the best for that. Um, and also one of our first DMs, which I feel like we need to pull up, is actually 
hilarious. I texted I her like- yesterday. Said I scrolled back. I wanted to see what her first conversation was, and I reached out just being like, "Oh, I want to help." Blah blah. Like, let me know if you need help. And you literally responded, "Oh my god, you are so sweet for that." I honestly have been crying for the past twenty four hours because I've been so overwhelmed and thought it would be fine keeping a sh- keeping um of sharing my breakup online. And holy shit, I was wrong. I literally did not think that many people cared about me and did not know people would record my lives. I'm so dumb. I have been lost and everything with management. I don't know what to do. I'd love to call you or something. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. And then I was like, please, okay, let's set up a call. She caught me in like a depressive episode there because I was like, I had gone through a really public breakup, which you guys have heard about a million and one times because I've shared it on here so many times. But like, I just didn't, I didn't know, didn't understand. And it's a lot going through a breakup one and then two going through a breakup when you have an online presence, which I didn't, I don't think at that time I even like knew that I had, like my mind just wasn't there yet. So I posted some things that I regretted and, you know, you live, you learn. But it's so funny because here we are today talking about breakups and you just... (laughs) you're like you're like yeah yeah i just went through a breakup <laughs> i didn't want to say it yeah. I was like, <laughs> um and yeah i think it, it, it that's why we were saying it's so full circle yeah. like wait we have to talk about this because i do think it is hard when we're both i feel like we're both online as people that just share a lot yeah and not everyone does that online and i think it's really hard to pick and choose what you share especially when it's like I don't know, I like sharing my vulnerable moments, but then you're in this state of mind and after, yeah, sometimes I regret it too. The first, I posted one video about the breakup. I really did regret and it was like a second and I was crying and I deleted it because I was like, you know what? I can share my experience, yeah. but I I don't I don't need to like bring someone else down online. Yeah, and I, I didn't. I really did not listen to that one. But I, I didn't either full, like shit talking yeah. spree on my life. Right. Like, and I think Whoops. and I think it's hard because it's like no one, you know, people will say about that, like, oh, get her offline. And I see like the comments and what people say. But it's like it's so hard when your job is also your life. Yeah. And um, I've never gone through a breakup anymore. I'm how old are you? I'm 23. You're 23. I'm 29. Not like age matters, but it is in my mind. It's crazy. It's like I've never gone through a breakup and I'm yeah, 29. This is your first breakup. First breakup, first boyfriend. And I think there's like. I've just like, I'm happy I like made that boundary in my head and I did end up making another video where I just was like, I'm going to talk about myself and my experience right now and how I'm struggling with this, but I don't need to speak about that specific person and what happened because there are some things that are meant to be kept secret (laughs) and to yourself, even if you do want to share it. And I think it's just a learning experience. Yeah. And I think you have to protect your own peace and privacy at one point, but it's also just like, there's no rule book for a breakup and like breakups are so hard. And then it's like, so first you go through a breakup, right? It's like you have to like tell your friends and family. Dealing with telling people online is a different thing. But it's like there's such a roller coaster of an emotions after a breakup. And it's like, especially if that's your first breakup. And yeah. that's like I, I always say like I think the first breakup, first love is like Everyone's been that shit that. will tear you down. Yeah. Like I was actually like I'll never see the light of day again. Yeah. And it's just so hard and i just i think it's something that's so relatable to girls which is why i feel like it's like important to share because it's like you're so lost you're like what do i do and like how do you get over a breakup yeah and i actually don't have the answer for that (laughs) that's why when i posted that video that i did keep up the like two days ago which was so well said by the way thank you and i even after that i was like reaching out to kate and my team and everyone was like why why did i like again freaking out about it and then i was just like everyone's response for the majority was just like you said that in such a way that was so relatable to people and just like speaking about your like true emotions and I think that is something that whenever I go back in my head I'm like no I don't regret that like that I don't regret because the getting thousands and thousands of comments and messages of people seeing that like for the first time I haven't gone through something that a lot of other people have and they're like trying to help me yeah I think that is a beautiful thing that like everyone was just trying to help each other in those comments. Yeah. Like everyone was just like, and I was reading every single one. Like I genuinely don't know what to do right now. And it feels so weird that I yeah. don't like have the answers. I'm like literally reaching out to people just like, do you have a, I saw you just went through a breakup. Like what's a book I should read? What's a yeah. podcast? Like I'm trying to get through this with having no answers. It's insane. Yeah. And I feel like it's so, it's just so hard when you first go through a breakup because it feels like, there's no other side to it because it's like 
you become so comfortable with this person that it, it like becomes a part of yourself in a way you know it's like you talk to this person every day you see yeah. them every day and I always say like I think a boyfriend can be like a comfort blanket and then it's like it gets ripped away from you and yeah. you're just so lost and at first it's like well I'll do anything to just like try and get that back because it's like so comforting and I think what I mean I've learned and I've seen is I feel like some people will stay just because it feels comfortable, comfortable. and not because it's right and I right. feel like that's so important for people to hear is that like you need to do what's good for you and what's going to be good for you in the long run even if it doesn't feel good in the moment yeah. and it's like actually the hardest thing ever to do um and we were just talking about this that I feel like especially I guess with the first love I've only had one experience but I genuinely now being out of it only a few days or I guess now it's been so now it's been like fully almost like I don't know two almost two weeks yeah and I just like the last two days was my first time that I like didn't cry all day like I'm just like I for the first oh we were talking about well, how, like, two weeks is like very recently still like, I know that, I think I'm just being very hard fresh. on myself that yeah. I'm just like you have to like let yourself go through the emotions yeah and you cannot be hard on yourself because I, like, I think it's that we were saying that there was like I was wearing you're wearing rose colored glasses there are things that now you're like oh with my first relationship that you would never let slide now or let yeah. happen and you know more of like what you deserve where I'm now seeing that and I just was like how was I missing all of this yeah and it wasn't that I was missing like all I'll say about the situation is like regardless of what anyone thinks is like I was being told truly until the end that this person wants to spend the rest of their life with me. So yeah. I was blindsided. Yeah. Yes, there were certain actions that now I'm just like, ah, interesting. Maybe this person was distancing themselves from yeah. me. I didn't see that. But when someone's words don't match up to their actions, it's very hard to see that when you're in love with someone. Yeah, it is very hard. And like, I always say, I'm like, being in a relationship, like you have blinders on. Like you are just very, you're biased to it. Because it's like, you want to believe the best in that person and I don't I don't know I always say that girls always have blinders on in relationships because yeah. like you don't I don't know you don't know I think one thing for me that's been the hardest and I'm like no I don't want to cry again I said I wouldn't wait my foot's cramping <laughs> <laughs> wait my um, toes always cramp and like curl up like yeah, this and they get stuck on? um I don't get and I don't think I will ever understand and I feel like whoever made this a thing that it needs to be it's like how do you spend every day with someone and if it ends up that you break up who made it a thing that you can never talk to that person again <laughs> I know it's not for everyone like some people yeah out there are like oh we can remain friends I just think that that's more when you're both like maybe equally like we fell out of love but we have so much respect for each other mm -hmm. but a lot of the time and what I've been getting in a lot of my comments is like no contact block yeah. be done that's the only way you could get over it and I'm having such no, no that's I'm having that. such a hard time with like being like how is this person in my life every single day and now I just have to like well it's like a the part rule of you, that I yeah. can no longer it's also speak to you, you, know, you know I think a lot of that is part of the like coping because it sucks in the beginning and then will help you in the long run with getting over it right. but it's like that's so hard after a breakup too because it's like you it's just like oh because we said the term breakup right like now it's like oh well, like we can't talk when it's like okay but just yesterday like things were just so normal That's and it's like I'm so it's the weirdest about. thing to yeah. comprehend and there's no rule that you have to follow and right. like I also don't know like I'm speaking as if like I'm the dating master over here because <laughs> I'm not I'm definitely not um there is no rule to follow but I feel like with the no contact thing it's all, I think out of sight out of mind and distracting yeah. yourself is good which is why it's so great that like we're in Austin right now for South by Southwest and it's like you're doing all these amazing things for work and like you have opportunities going for yourself and like you have things to distract yourself I mean with. that was the first thing like yesterday I was like to my parents I was like this is the first day I haven't like cried and I was like I feel so happy and good today because I'm like working and focusing on myself and doing these panels and like just like that is what yes being distracted is so helpful I think there's a difference I think a lot of I'm learning and like I think men handle their emotions very differently where they it's do. like going out partying going on dating apps like right away trying to get this distraction and maybe not the healthiest most positive way and like 
I feel like a lot of girls right away are like, how can I heal? Yeah. Or I mean, not I well, can't speak for everyone, but no, I'm but like trying to that's heal. That's like an actual like thing that I always see with breakups. It's like at first, the first month, the first week or whatever, the, it's like the girl like depressed, crying. The guy's going out having like the best time ever. Then the girl like heals and gets over and it's like, fuck this guy. And then the guys like comes crawling right. back. They always come crawling back. The one thing about them is they will come crawling back. And it's like, ugh. And like, you know what? All I have to say <laughs> about that is like, cause everyone's saying that I'm like, I, I don't even need someone crawling back. All no, you don't. I, you don't. And I will. And I'm, there's no me going back. I have enough respect for myself, but I, all I want is someone to be able to accept responsibility for like, mm-hmm treating someone not the way they should be treated and And I think that that's just what I'm like yeah I think right now it's just for me it's no contact truly working on myself finding anything I could do to like feel better and learn from this and learn what I want in my next relationship not rushing into dating right now for me not rushing into you know like truly just focusing on myself and everyone can do whatever is good for them yeah that's what's gonna I think is the best thing that's gonna help me healthy distractions for me like uh, healthy distractions is what's helping me the I most. think girlfriends after yes. a breakup are so important my friends have been like so freaking yeah. amazing what's something for you in any of your breakups or maybe like your breakup like you said with like your first love like and you felt like you were like dying which is like how I've been feeling yeah is like which I know will be okay but what is like what like helped you distracting yourself and I always say this I'm like you need to just go out there do things you wouldn't do before say yes to things because it's like once you just get out in the world and you just have other experiences with other humans and it's like you're just gonna and I'm not saying guys and I'm not saying like dating with guys like that's not what I'm talking about it's just like going to actually do stuff and you know the first I'll I'll say in the beginning of a breakup it's like sit in bed cry moment for sure but like just getting out there and being with your friends and realizing like that there can be a life outside of the life that you had with that person because you're so trained to think that like there can't be and like that was your world and you need to like go out there and make a new world for yourself you know it's hard because I feel like with this roller coaster of a breakup right so it's like first you're like grieving this person yes that's what I feel yeah if you're grieving it's almost it's harder like, than grieving someone that dies because you're grieving someone still alive that you, you feel like you can't speak yeah to. like it's crazy no it is and it's actually grief <laughs> it's actually it is. some grief it is. and then you go through like angry phase yep. where you're like let's fucking go like that's been me this week. <laughs> I'm like, we're, Which is a we're, little we're, we're, we're turning it, it it's around. Like, it's like sad to anger. Like the anger gets you yeah. moving on a little bit more. Yeah. So then it goes into like relief and like acceptance and you get over it. And like, I think on the other end of a breakup, I always say like, it can be exciting, even though it doesn't sound like exciting. No, but, like, no. I, I it can see be that exciting it can be. And it's like yeah. just new experiences and like you have this like sense of freedom. Someone messaged me the other day. Cammie Crawford, do you know who that is? She's a, a podcast. Okay. She messaged me. She was the only person that messaged me and I loved it. She said, congratulations. That's what I always say. But then it's sometimes it's like, too she said, soon. sorry, if you, she said, sorry, yeah. if it's too soon or like, sorry, if you feel so way. I said, I responded. I said, no, I love this. Thank you so much. She said, like, this is going to bring like all new, exciting things for you. Yeah, like, And I just love instead of all the people not saying it was bad, like I've had so many amazing people reach out, but just saying like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. But when you flip it in your head of being like, congratulations, and even yesterday just having such a good day of like my panels and people coming up to me like, you speak yeah. amazing. And like, yeah. just like all these like exciting things I have coming up. And then I'm just like, oh, wow, like this is good. Like something leads your life, but new things are going to come And it's into exciting it. and a new experience. And what you learn from this, like and what you learn from going through a breakup and like this type of like feeling that you've never felt before is like so good for yourself even though it doesn't feel it right now but like you're gonna learn so much from this you can't stress about going back in time or changing anything it's like this is what it is and it's like it is sometimes like I think breakups are exciting because it's like good for you for changing a part of your life that like wasn't working yeah I just think this is so helpful for girls to hear thanks for coming on Remy thank you for having me I love you cheers wait we don't have a drink (laughs) cheers cheers (laughs) Okay, off to the honky tonk. Cheers to only good things. Cheers! It's not that deep. It's not that deep.
Oh, is that a banana? Oh, so <laughs> Crazy. I'm just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to another What Would Alex <laughs> Do? Okay, this segment's gonna be a little different because it's the end of the Austin weekend. It's the end of the last unwell party and we have all the unwell people here. <laughs> <laughs> we're all a little drunk, okay? Drunk. We've all been drinking all She's night champagne. and then we were like, oh, this would be so great to podcast after. But we're gonna do a What Would Alex Do for you guys because I feel like this is a fun group. Braxton is a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, Harry keeps calling Braxton a sausage. He's a sausage, but we love him. He's so lovely, guys. If you can meet him, you just give him a big hug. Harry's hyping up Braxton. So we have Harry Jowsey, Madeline RG. Wait, I am jealous because I'm going to sound like disgusting next to you guys with your pretty accents. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, actually. It so I'm going to read what other girls have written in. and <laughs> We're going to give our advice. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. My boyfriend hooked up with my cousin while I was sleeping. She spent the night at our apartment. She finally told me, "This is your boyfriend hooked okay. up with your cousin. That's my like... My boyfriend hooked up with my cousin while I was sleeping. Full stop. She spent the night at our apartment. Full stop. She finally told me. What's full stop? Like, period? Period. Oh. Wait. Do you call it full stop? Yes. What do you say, brother? Like, I mean, period. Yeah, full like, stop. It's like, Period. Okay. I never heard full stop. Okay, again. I'm gonna say period, full stop. My boyfriend hooked up with my cousin while I was sleeping. Full stop, period. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what would you do if your boyfriend hooked up with your cousin? Well, Moral of the story. I'd. I would tell my cousin, "Yo, what are you doing, brother?" Really? I feel Wait, like I'd okay. like kill well, my yeah. cousin and my boyfriend. My cousin's thirteen. What? What? Thirteen? <laughs> so I okay, hold call on. the police. Okay, okay, no. <laughs> All right, this one, Harry. Maybe you'll be able to weigh in on this. My boyfriend keeps liking girls' photos, bikini slash showing bodies off, and I've had oh. to tell him three times how it makes me feel, and he says he will stop. He does it again. Um, for the boy, Harry, what do you think about when doing this? If you're liking other girls' photos, you, sir, are a naughty sausage. Do you not like other girls' photos? <laughs> No, no, no. I feel like it used to never get to me. And then <laughs> recently or like the past years as I've grown up, I'm just like, just don't Who do cares? it. Who Just don't, don't do like it. that but shit. I feel like a lot of guys say like, oh, I don't even think. Like I d I'm just like tapping. No, like I don't even that's think. That's what I used to say. I used to say, oh my God, I would like everything on my feed. Yeah, yeah. Here's, that's what they the say. Thing. Don't like any everything on your feed. Text your girlfriend. Say she wants to go to lunch. Buy her flowers. If you're, if you're using that finger, use it to buy her flowers. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what I'm saying. Madeline. Madeline <laughs> oh, <fuck>. oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anywho, don't look at that. <laughs> Madeline. 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 Uh, hi. I agree. What? You're not in for the Context. bikini photo liking. No. It's gross. It's true, and it's it. Ew. He must be a fan. Yeah, he must be a fan. He must oh, be. I'm glad we agree right on this because I feel like some people really just give it up and are. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm saying. I actually right. used to think it was fine. I used to be like, fine. Me too. It. I didn't think anything of it. Okay, uh, but the tricky thing is huh? at University of Miami, every girl, so like our party outfits were bikinis and sneakers. So I was always of the thought that like, oh, my boyfriend, he's just liking like everyone's photos because they're all in bikinis. And then I feel like recently I was like, I feel like I don't like okay, that. I was hooking up with a guy <laughs> drunk and forgot I was on my period. We just kissed. Woke up in the morning to a bloody bed. I don't know how I came back from this. I was so embarrassed in the morning. It was really awkward, but he oh. still likes me and talks to me. What do you think of this? What he would gives you do? A fuck. That's what I feel like you're blood? getting your period. Obviously, Who cares? it was a mistake. It's a Who girly cares? thing. Yeah, right? A little bit of blood. Like, we all bleed. <laughs> Like who cares? <laughs> I, that's the crazy. Have you ever shit. had a girl bleed in your bed? So much. Oh, okay. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Are you crazy. Harry like, condones bloody beds. Yeah. I also think it's like a it's womanly natural. thing. It's she natural. She obviously got her period and forgot. <laughs> One time, I was at my boyfriend's frat party, and this girl that he had a minor thing with was there and kept going up to him minor? when I wasn't around. What do you mean minor? I don't know. Eventually, maybe like it was like a prior thing. Oh, okay. I'm thinking. Oh. And I have a story to follow up with this. <sighs> Eventually, I was fed up, so I walked past her and told her to stop talking to him because it was so disrespectful. Then she followed both of us into the next room and started walking over to him, all smiley. 
So I get up and announce that I'm going to beat a bitch up in the basement and start walking towards her and then she leaves the party. What would you have done? Someone's coming up and keeps following your significant other. I'm breaking his jaw. Yeah, okay. Wait, a lot of girls were writing in asking, is it true that a guy actually knows if he wants to date you after like the first few dates? Yes. You know. We do know. So the first date is like the decipher. Yeah. It's so funny because I feel like for girls, I don't know, I feel like if we go on a date with like a guy, I just feel like we go into it like going on a date. It's like, oh, like, I don't know what this could be. I feel like we don't like really categorize it. I've done like fifth and sixth dates with guys that I fucking thought like sucked. Really? I was like, I'll just give him another five chances to not suck. Yeah. Five? Yeah. Oh, that's the thing with girls, though, is I feel like we have too much. Like, oh, they could get better. Yeah. <laughs> we could get better. I feel like guys are, like, very cutthroat where they're like, oh, no, they suck. Like, that's yeah. not happening. But, like, girls, I feel like we're kind of like, well, maybe. They have, like, one quality that I want. Yeah. I'm like, no, one? I have, like, 25. Like, I'm like, oh, you're about fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, one quality? Let's just keep going bunch. with that one. Yeah. Like, they actually suck, but, like, wow. I don't know. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Shout Lucky you. Guys. Harry Jowsey ASMR. Do it in your teeth. Go. Ow. <laughs> Everyone. We're gonna have some girl talk now. We Thank Harry, God. It, we want we wanna have girl talk. Ooh, I need to be <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. He's so enormous. I'm always surprised. Oh wait, guys, I'm gonna kill myself. I fucking hate these shoes. They're so ugly. Wait, what? Oh, wait, they're kind of. Wait, Madeline. No, they're the cute, thing but is, not with though, the jeans. Those are oh, like so them. cool. Where it's like, I was thinking about this when you came in in those shoes. I'm like, I could never look fucking cool in those shoes. I don't look cool. I look you like do I've look gone cool, hiking though. and stumbled like, you're into like an unwell event. Pretty and cool and look cool in those shoes. If I wore those shoes, everyone would be like, is she okay today? Can you hype me up like this more often? <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. <laughs> I really like them. Thanks. And you need to teach me how to wear sh like that. I want to learn how to wear like this. Can you walk in heels? Um, I thought I could, and then I saw like, a video. You, when you go out, do you wear <laughs> heels? Like when I, yeah, yeah. What's the vibe in like London? Uh, I don't go out in London. Well, but you went out with me else. in London. Oh, I did, and I wore heels. I wore my Jimmy Choo's. Okay, Jimmy Choo Guru. Yeah. Okay, I love it. So you can walk in heels, but you just don't prefer. I but don't do prefer. people in London wear heels? Uh, yeah, they do. Do you want to know something fucking crazy? What? The outfit I wore when we went to the box. Yeah. I took it off in my flat. It hasn't moved. Really? Yeah, it's in the exact yeah, same fucking like, spot. Like, in my bathtub. That's exactly how I am. And it's like, I... Clothes make the most mess that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, I'm not dirty. I'm just messy. Like, there's a difference. Don't you I think? Know. Yeah, there is a difference. Like, I'm not stinky. Like, I smell... <laughs> <laughs> I smell clean. Yeah, she like, smells I have, great. <laughs> I have good hygiene. I just, like... My, I posted like cleaning my room this week at home and I'm like at least I'm cleaning my room but it's like everyone's like oh she's disgusting I'm like no like I don't I just like why does it have to be like you're disgusting if there's clothes on the floor I know I, I think no one actually believes that I think they just say it to say it but I think they get it from me though because I had cockroach cockroaches in my room last year but it was like a house in Florida like a college house like it had cockroaches that wasn't for that's me that's not even your fault though because houses just have cockroaches yeah exactly like they came with the house yeah and they didn't come with me you inherited them as fine <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bring them no but Having I would have had cockroaches if those existed in the UK but thank fucking god they don't they don't exist in the UK Is I that a thing? No, it's not a thing like we have like rats but I've never had rats but there's not co how would they the cockroaches like don't get over there no like we just don't have them that's cool yeah <laughs> maybe i need to move there <laughs> <laughs> madeline and i are gonna have some girl time officially we kicked harry out so <laughs> i'm just making a drink do you drink do you like tequila yeah i love tequila. wait do you know i was just in paris and they were like tequila like they looked at me like i had eight fucking heads really like Why? They, they said over here it's just like vodka they were like that's such an american thing to like tequila but people in paris look at you like you have eight heads no matter what you say I guess that's true. Yeah, love it. I just discovered tequila like two weeks ago when See? I was in LA. I, so exactly my point. Yeah. You haven't had it in London. Oh wait, good fucking point. No, but I think that might just be me. <laughs> no, but I, when I was in London, we were going for drinks and it was all like wine. Yeah, like it's, it's very wine and like. Like they don't like take shots here. Yeah, like, or it's, it's just like 
everyone drinks so early in the UK. Like you literally get started when you're like 14 and everyone drinks vodka. That's so a thing. So it's very like vodka. Yeah. Everyone in Europe like drinks earlier and then I feel like America, it's like you don't because you're like not allowed to and then you get to college and everyone goes like fucking crazy. Yeah, people still go crazy at college in the UK, but like they, I feel like we finished drinking earlier. Like I'm, actually I fucking hate saying my age. Never mind. I'm 19. What? Yeah. Did you not know? Wait. What? You're 19? Yeah. No way. How old are you? 23? No way. Wait, you're making me feel like a grandma right now. Wait, there's no... Are you... Is this like... (laughs) Do we have fact check on this? Is this real? She's lying. I'm born... No, I'm born in 2004. When are you born? Wait, Madeline, what's happening right now? Did you not know? Like, I can't even legally drink in this country. Thanks for pouring me a drink, Alex Al. Wait, something's happening... No, I, you're not! I'm Googling it because I don't believe you and everyone's lying to me and making me feel weird. It says you're 23 years old, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> was this just a prank? Yeah, sorry. I hate you. <laughs> when you're a born? really good liar. Is I that know. Is like a good quality you have? Yeah, it's great. That's cool. I'm a really bad liar. Like, I'm a liar that like when I lie, I just show it on my face and everyone knows I'm lying. I feel so like, like you could lie to me and I wouldn't know. Try it at some point in this episode. Can you tell me a lie? And okay, I'll see I will, I'm going to try and detect when you finally do it. Okay, well, I will. We're going to get back into what would Alex do because I feel like we need to continue on with these questions. This one says, I hate my boyfriend's best friend's girlfriend. Do I invite her to my wedding? Wait, fiance's best friend's girlfriend. Do I invite her to my wedding? Ooh, I feel like you have to. You kind of do have to, even if you hate her, I think. But, like, that's a tricky situation. I feel like unless you do an intimate wedding, you have to just, like, suck it up and invite her. Just, like, sit her near the toilets and, like, put her with the person that you hate the most. Like, your weird aunt. Sit them next to each other. I feel like, are you good with being, like, exclusive with invites? Because, like, I'm the type of person that I get stressed about not inviting people. Like, even, like, my birthday parties, I'm, like, uh, I get stressed. I'm, like, I don't even know this person, but, like, I feel bad, so I feel like I have to invite them. Like, I feel like I get worried about that, but recently I feel like I've been trying to be better about that, but it's hard. I've never sent out an invite in my life. Why? I've never hosted an event. Really? Yeah, never. Do you know that I started having, like, my own parties when I was, like, six years old? Like, I've always had every year like uh alex rolls birthday so bash. on brand i love it really yeah because that was a lie alex l's birthday bash was at six lie. years old and i lied to you, you shut the fuck it. up you believe no! me? <laughs> <laughs> that was so good Wait, i'm so proud of myself and i couldn't even keep it in for more than like five seconds but i lied yeah, you told me i should have like i should have like <laughs> described a really crazy birthday party because i would have so believed it, it would have been so good yeah but that would be on brand so that's a believable lie fuck i fell for it i'm not good at knowing when people are lying to me people lie to me all the fucking time and i just let them yeah that's why i've been cheated on like seven times but it's fine uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> next question <laughs> wait can you do your american accent please i saw you do it on tiktok one time i think it's good but everyone told me that it's canadian wait give me something to say okay say I'm going out to the bars tonight with my friends. Should I wear this crop top or should I wear this bodycon dress? Okay, so I'm going out. Correct me when I go wrong, please. I'm going out to the bar. You already sound British. Fuck. I'm going out to the bar tonight. Is it bad? (laughs) Don't be mean. (laughs) I'm going out to the bar. Wait, you sound Canadian. No, but the one I saw on TikTok was really good. I don't hear the difference between Canadians. I'm going out to the bar tonight with my friends. Say friends. That was good. Say friends. Friends. Friends? No. Say friends. 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 Should I wear a crop top or a bodysuit? Suit? You were good until suit. Wait, that's good. Suit? Should I try a British accent? Please. Give me something to say. Hello, my name's Alex Earl and I'm engaged. What is with all of this? I don't know. <laughs> I ruined Hello, it. my name's Alex Earl and I'm engaged. Yeah, you just sound... American. Say it again. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Hello. 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 Just let your O like go like this. Hello. 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 No wa. Hello. Hello. No wa. Hello. What? What? You go hello wa. (laughs) Oh. Hello. 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 Yes. Yes. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to. That's like a. It is. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Wait, fuck. Hello. Hello. 
Hello, my name's Alex Earl. 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 Yeah, it's so close. It's okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> what would you do if your boyfriend suddenly has a girl best friend? Like, it's obvious that she likes him and she is in my friend group. Wait. Oh, yuck. I feel like if one of my girl best friends became best friends with my boyfriend and it wasn't like a through me thing, I feel like that feels weird. That's like, really I want really my weird. best friends to be best friends with my boyfriend, but I don't want them to like have made this connection like like they just like started texting without me and like hung out without me. That's weird. You want them to like get along when you're all together and like yeah. know each other, but you don't want them to like go off and fucking brunch without you. Yeah. That's really weird. Yeah, and if she's your friend, that's doubly as, like, really weird. Yeah. I would kill them both. That's my advice. In that situation, I'm always like, who do you be more mad at? Like, I feel like the girlfriend. I would want to like say the girlfriend, but then I feel like that's underestimating how intentional the guy is being. Because I'm always like, oh, man, I'm fucking stupid. Let me just not be angry. I'm just going to, like... But it's like the girlfriend's also being intentional. No, yeah, that's why I'm, like, more angry at her. I'm but always more angry like with the girl. But that's... I feel like I shouldn't like under oh, oh, underestimate see, see what like what, what the boy is doing because i feel like yeah. they actually know exactly Cut what them they're off doing equally but i just feel like it's shittier of a girl to do like in my mind i just feel like guys always do shitty things so i'm like ugh, like whatever he did it again yeah right. but like a girl it's like you don't i feel like you don't expect girls to do shitty things but they do and then you're like hello yeah and it's so much worse because you didn't think they, they yeah, were gonna you don't do think that it. like yeah. i feel like i'm like preconceived with boys that if they do something wrong i'm like i hate you but i'm also like I guess it's just because you're a guy. You just get proved right. But then if it's a girl, you get proved wrong because you like trusted her so much yes, more. And you're like, yes. fuck. And then it's personal because yeah. you got proved wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Hate it. Hate. And I think we need to wrap it up here. I think, I don't know if we're going out tonight. I have a flight at 7 a.m. tomorrow, so I probably should not go. I, I think know. I do too. Really? Right. To or LA? like 10? 12? Nice. 7 and 10 a.m. Sucks to be you. But oh. at least you're going to <laughs> LA, so the plane will be nice. I'm mm. going back to... Oh, you're going to LA? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to LA too. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll see you in LA. But that's enough for this episode. I mean, we have to get out of Austin. It has been a long weekend here. Thank you guys for coming along. Thanks, Madeline, for doing this with me. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Ooh.